говорит Москва. Есть Москва, не на дочь, не тенду. Hello comrades, it's Comrade Reese here and today I'm going to be doing a video that really just has to be done because frankly there are so much misconceptions surrounding the situation in Venezuela and there is just way too much stuff to talk about in one video. However, I will be talking about one very common misconception that I have heard so many times from absolute idiots on the comment section of not just my YouTube videos but also on the videos of other leftists as well. This misconception simply states it's something along the lines of B -b -b socialism doesn't work l l look at Venezuela whenever you look for information on Venezuela on the internet you will come across baseless accusations of this kind from people like Steven Crowder or Ben Shapiro both of whom are idiotic enough to regard socialism as when government does stuff you know I've even seen Ben Shapiro try and compare Joseph Stalin to Adolf Hitler and then claim that Adolf Hitler was heavily influenced by Karl Marx it was a split over power not over fundamental principle, and the fact is that the communists were fascists. I mean, Stalin was a fascist. The Nazis were of the left. And, and I mean, if you read Hitler's books, well, you, if you read Mein Kampf, what you find is that he was very heavily influenced by Marx. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah. I know. To make matters worse, he said that in front of young college students. Obviously, both Stephen Crowder and Ben Shapiro have never taken the time to even have a little peek at the works of Marx and Engels, as they both have a very false perception of what socialism actually is. That is why I conclude that debating with complete buffoons like Stephen Crowder and Ben Shapiro is a waste of time. It's a complete waste of time. And I've, I've learned that from experience. It's the loud and triumphant idiot over the wise and stuttering genius. Hence the reason why I'm not a big fan of debating people in the YouTube comments. Democratic socialism. It's not the same as socialism socialism because it's democratic, right? Or something, right? If anything, when I come across these types of people, I simply point at them and laugh and send them this. <laughs> Serious? So anyway, comrades, with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Now, you've more than likely heard other people, as well as the mainstream media, trying to blame Nicolas Maduro and the Venezuelan government for the crisis in the country. It is very likely that you've heard media outlets in the United States claim that socialism is ruining Venezuela and that America should go and do something about it. Because, yeah, the, the foreign policy of the United States has really helped other countries, hasn't it? Especially when they are full of natural resources like oil. It definitely hasn't turned Iraq into an absolute shit all. Oh, oh wait. But it really, it, it's really helped Libya. Uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, it, so, they can't be wanting to do the same to Venezuela, can they? Right now, socialist dictator Nicolas Maduro lashing out at the U.S., cozying up to Russia tonight as he attempts to cling to power in Venezuela. This after opposition leader Juan Guaido swore himself in and was backed by the rest of the free world as that country's rightful leader. So, comrades, let's be real about this now. The United States is an imperialist country, and if you know of Lenin's analysis of imperialism, you would know that the ultimate goal of the US is to achieve domination over the natural resources, the cheap labor, and markets of pretty much the entire world. And if it cannot achieve that domination, it resorts to starting a predatory imperialist war to forcefully achieve the domination of another country. So, yeah, that's why countries like the DPRK and Iran have weapons of mass destruction people because we all know what happened to Iraq don't we now while the thought of a nuclear war absolutely terrifies me and I fully support nuclear disarmament this nuclear disarmament should be entirely non-discriminant but the imperialists don't see it that way the sole purpose of a nuclear weapon is for a defense mechanism by this I mean that the reason why countries like the DPRK have nuclear weapons is to prevent a US imperialist attack the imperialists on the other hand see a nuclear weapon as a 
a threat or an attack mechanism. They want to ban all other countries from having nuclear weapons, but fully arm themselves and their puppet regimes like Israel with weapons of mass destruction. Now comrades, there is no denying the fact that Venezuela is in total shit state. In Venezuela, there are food shortages, there are empty shelves in the shops, there are people living in poor conditions. But is this due to a direct result of socialism? Well, no it isn't. In fact, it's quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, it is external factors to socialism that are a threat to Venezuela which are causing all of these problems. If you're sat there thinking to yourself, what the bloody hell is he on about? Then I'll briefly explain what's going on here. Now before I say anything, I just want to really piss off some emotionally driven right-wing nutjobs by saying that Venezuela is not actually a socialist country yet. Oh, I can't wait to see the comment section of this video. To provide evidence for what I've just said, we have have to first look at what socialism actually is so that we can see why Venezuela is not a socialist country quite yet. To do this, I mean that we need to look at the state of a country's economy and know not whether the economy is shite, but we need to look at socialism by definition. Socialism is when the means of production is collectively owned by the working class and the state is controlled by the working class. Now, if you're new to all of this, you're probably going, hey, whoa, 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 slow the fuck down, pal. Well, let me break it up for you. The means of production are things like tools, equipment, and raw materials that working people use to carry out their labor. You could also count the workplace itself into the means of production too, as that is where the labor is carried out. Under capitalism, the means of production are privately owned by the capitalist class. The working people do not own the means of production. They simply use the means of production to generate the value which gets taken away from them, only to get a tiny fraction of that value back as a wage. Under socialism, by contrast, the means of production are collectively owned by the working class. The tools, equipment, raw materials, and workplaces belong to the working class. In essence, this is how we Marxists define the word class. We define classes not by how much money Money an individual has, but rather by their relation to the means of production. And the ruling class, the class that owns the means of production, would also have control over the state and use the power of the state against the class that doesn't own the means of production. Therefore, under capitalism, since the ruling class, which is the capitalist class, owns the means of production, they will use the power of the state against the interests of the working class by using the police, or in some cases, even the military to suppress any working class uprising and strikes. On the other hand, under socialism, since the ruling class, which is the working class, owns the means of production, they will use the power of the state against the overthrown capitalist class. The classic example of this actually happening was in the Soviet Union under Lenin and Stalin. So, when you hear a communist say that we must abolish private property, don't quiver in fear. It doesn't mean that we want to break into your house, shoot your dog in the face, nick your TV, and then make you queue up to use a bloody toothbrush because we have a real short of memes around here. We simply want the means of production that is now owned by the capitalist class, which is only a tiny minority of people, to be in the hands of the working class, which is the vast majority of the people. What this misconception of making you line up for a toothbrush stems from is a big misunderstanding of the major difference between private property and personal property. So how does all of this relate to what has been going on over in Venezuela recently? Well, good question. A lot of it does. This is because what I've just told you about socialism being when the means of production and the state are in the hands of the working people, well, in Venezuela, that's not exactly the case yet. The reason for this is because about two-thirds of the country's economy is in the private sector, and we can still see the capitalist production relations in Venezuela right now. By this, I mean that the means of production do not belong to the working people in the country. This makes Venezuela have a status of being under socialist construction. It is not a socialist country yet, although there is a socialist party in power there. So when looking at the situation in Venezuela, it's not very wise to say that socialism doesn't work because the economy is shit. You determine whether an economy is socialist or not by looking at how it functions. Many right-wingers, however, will blatantly use Venezuela as a target for their game of, hey, let's be smug and say that socialism doesn't work and then provide absolutely no evidence whatsoever for what we've just said. But when you tell them that Venezuela is not a socialist country, they would reply back with, oh, so you're saying that it's not real socialism? Or, so you're saying that it's 
only socialist when you want it to be. But what they don't understand here is that you have to have evidence for calling a country socialist or not. And that evidence is that a huge chunk of Venezuela's economy is owned by the capitalists. And the people who work in that private sector are also owned by the capitalists. If I were to label a political system that Venezuela might have, it would be a sort of social democratic type of system. Nevertheless, back in the 1980s and the 1990s, Venezuela was very supportive of the neoliberal Thatcherite type of capitalism. And this really didn't help Venezuela's economy whatsoever because the country's poverty rate went up by 30% in a matter of 15 years. It went up from 15% to 45% basically. Even though capitalism did replace feudalism, with a far more technological and a much more industrially advanced society, it did fail to industrialize most of the world. Key examples of this were Russia and the Far East. You know, they were left as semi-feudal societies. Before the revolutions in those countries, the industrial proletariat was pretty much non-existent. And even if you look today, much of the Southern Hemisphere is still suffering as a result of capitalism. However, when Hugo Chavez came to power in the late 1990s, he had implemented reforms that greatly improved the lives of the poorest 80% of the population. We can see this by looking at Venezuela's demographics within just 12 years of Hugo Chavez being in power. During this time, unemployment had halved, infant mortality had decreased by a third, the country's GDP per capita almost doubled, and the extreme poverty within Venezuela went down by two thirds. These reforms also eliminated illiteracy within Venezuela and are the cause for around 4 million people now attending university within the country. So how was Chavez able to do this? The best answer I can give you is yes, oil. He was able to use the money gained from the country's oil to implement these economic reforms. So how did Venezuela's problem start? Well, if one answer again, oil. Yes, the Yankees bloody love this stuff because it makes them money. Basically, what had happened is that in the early 2000s, Hugo Chavez, who was the president of the country at the time, had tried to nationalize the country's oil. This later caused a coup, not from the working class of Venezuela, but from the wealthy elite in Venezuela, who had a huge amount of support from the United States. The United States is also Venezuela's biggest importer of oil, so they basically would prefer to have oil at a far cheaper price. So Venezuela has the right to be afraid of the United States because if we look back through history we can see what happened to Chile, Grenada, Nicaragua, Guatemala and also Honduras. Every single one of these countries had their anti-imperialist regimes overthrown by the US government simply because they were setting up a development path for their own people and taking control of their natural resources. So I really don't see it as a huge surprise if what has been going on in Venezuela has got something to do with the United States. The fact that Venezuela Venezuela's economy relies so much on oil is, I think, a big contributor to their problems. This is because if we look to not so long ago, to about five years ago, so in 2014, we can see that there was a huge crash in the prices of oil. Hugo Chavez was using the money gained from the oil to fund social programs like healthcare, education, and so on, because, you know, who needs that? But he wasn't really saving enough money to diversify the country's economy. Therefore, when this crash happened in 2014, I think the technical term is Venezuela was pretty fucked. Now whether you criticize Hugo Chavez for that is irrelevant to me, but to think that this is because of socialism would just make you very idiotic. This is because when the prices of oil crash, problems like these happen to oil rich countries in the southern hemisphere all the time. Another way to look at this is to look at the fact that market fluctuations are a factor of capitalism. So to look at Venezuela, which is actually suffering from the symptoms of capitalism and say that socialism is causing it, would make you look pretty stupid indeed. So basically what we are seeing is not socialism in action like you would hear many right-wingers claiming on the big old mainstream media but rather an act of sabotage by the capitalists who still dominate the country's economy who have the full support of the US imperialists. I mean there are billionaires who are supporting opposition groups in Venezuela that are standing against the Bolivarians, who the mainstream media over here and also in the United States are labeling as heroes. Another notion you're more than likely to hear is b -b 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 Venezuela has a shortage of food b -b because of socialism. Now, there is absolutely no denying the fact that there are food shortages in Venezuela and that the country's supermarket shelves are not very full at all. But is this the fault of socialism? Well, no. 
You see, this is very similar to the sabotage that happened in Chile back in the 1970s that caused a food shortage. But the socialists in Chile were able to use a system called Cybersyn that helped them in centrally planning the country's economy and distributing 70% of the resources to where they needed to be. Now what I find interesting is that despite the claims of food shortages in the country, you can still find plenty of street markets that are full of food. Now, okay, there are shortages in oil, flour, and also toilet paper in Venezuela. But what I find pretty odd is that there are plenty of kitchen rolls available. This is because only a few companies in Venezuela own the country's resources. So when the Socialist Party came to power in Venezuela, this made these companies restrict the amount of resources available. Also, to make matters worse, some companies within Venezuela, namely the country's biggest employer, Empresas Polar, have been on about making shady deals with the IMF to support the opposition against the Bolivarians. Oh, don't you just hate those socialists. There has also been evidence showing big companies in Venezuela hiding food supplies from consumers. Again, this is not down to socialism, it's sabotage. Now, while there are food shortages in Venezuela, the people there are not lying on the streets dying due to starvation. If that was the case, the media would have their hands all over it and they'd be shitting blood for weeks. So, what's been happening in Venezuela recently? Well, it's actually a coup against the democratically elected president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. You know, this coup is being carried out by Guaido. Was Guaido elected at all to become the country's president? No. He wasn't. What I find amazing is that the United States, which was back in 2016, having a tantrum about supposed Russian meddling in the presidential elections, now thinks it's completely fine to support a coup that's aimed at sabotaging Venezuela's economy. Ah uh, yeah, not hypocritical at all in the slightest. Well done America. But if you watch the media in the United States, you hear a different story of how the opposition, namely Guaido, who is being backed by Latin American countries that themselves had their anti-imperialist system sabotaged by US-backed saboteurs, as well as billionaires who support the opposition groups against the Bolivarians, is fighting for the interests of the Venezuelan people against the tyranny of the so-called dictator, Nicolas Maduro. A socialist dictator. Maduro dictatorship. A dictator with no legitimate claim to power. It has been a disaster on all counts. But what I find just so sickening and absolutely devastating is that the vast majority of the Venezuelan people have been made completely anonymous by by the mass media in the United States, and they're calling a right-wing opposition that has no votes from the people whatsoever a democratic entity. Yeah, don't you just love the United States? Now, this coup did fail. However, in response to this failed coup, the United States has really been cooking something up. They say that they want to help Venezuela and give so-called humanitarian aid, but what they're really all about is the domination over their natural resources. And I also think it's safe to say that Cuba is in the firing line as well. Yeah, look, we're in conversation with major American companies now that are either in Venezuela or in the case of Citgo here in the United States. Uh, I think we're trying to 
to get to the same end result here. You know, uh, Venezuela is one of the three countries I call the troika of tyranny. It'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of the United States. We both have a lot at stake here, making this come out the right way. Si los Estados Unidos pretenden intervenirnos, tendrán un Vietnam peor que el que se han podido imaginar. No... Nicolas Maduro has warned Americans to expect a second Vietnam War if Donald Trump intervenes in Venezuela's constitutional crisis. It's a nightmare that no U.S. administration would want to repeat. But could it really happen? John Bolton, Mr. Trump's national security adviser, was recently pictured carrying a note reading 5,000 troops to Colombia. He may be trolling. There's no confirmation that such deployment has been planned. We're already talking to the National Assembly. With Mr. Maduro enjoying public backing from U.S. adversaries like Russia, China and Iran. Mr. Trump's hawkish White House might decide there is sufficient threat to U.S. interests to warrant intervention. All options are on the table. If America did intervene, the loyalty of the Venezuelan military would be key. Most likely, the army, like the country, is divided. So, like in Vietnam, the U.S. could find itself backing one side in an intractable civil war. In Vietnam, the U.S. was fighting a proxy war against the Soviet Union and China, who provided massive logistical and military support to North Vietnam. Could Mr. Maduro enjoy similar support? China has publicly backed Mr. Maduro, but Beijing doesn't seem to have much appetite for foreign military adventures. Vladimir Putin's Russia, on the other hand, has a proven record of using military force abroad. But actually fighting Americans face to face is a risk Mr. Putin is unlikely to take. So comparison with Vietnam might be hyperbole, but there's no doubt the US intervention might be messy. So to summarize, comrades, all of what's been going on in Venezuela, even with what's been going on recently with the coup that had been started by Guaido, is down to sabotage. You may hear people talking of socialism causing all of the economic problems and the shortages of resources, but these are all symptoms of external factors to socialism and are actually contradictions within capitalism. Soy Nicolás Maduro, Presidente Constitucional de la República Bolivariana de Venezuela. Y quiero enviarle un mensaje al pueblo de los Estados Unidos para alertarlo de la campaña de la guerra mediática, comunicacional, psicológica que se desarrolla en los medios internacionales y en especial en los medios de comunicación de los Estados Unidos contra Venezuela. Se ha preparado una campaña para justificar un golpe de Estado en Venezuela que ha sido preparado financiado y apoyado activamente por la administración de Donald Trump. En nuestro país queda la mayor reserva petrolera del mundo entero, certificada. Y los ojos de quienes dirigen el imperio en Estados Unidos quieren ponerle la mano a nuestro petróleo, como hicieron en Irak, como hicieron en Libia. No, nuestro petróleo nos pertenece a nosotros. Estamos certificando la primera reserva de oro del mundo. Tenemos certificada la cuarta reserva de gas del mundo. Somos un país de grandes recursos energéticos, de grandes recursos naturales. Esa es la verdad verdadera de por qué el ataque incesante contra Venezuela. Se ha adelantado una campaña brutal de falsas imágenes, de imágenes trucadas, de imágenes montadas. No creas todo lo que te dicen los medios televisivos y los medios de comunicación de Estados Unidos. And that is because imperialism has its own internal contradictions. But not only that, it is the heroic and valiant struggle of anti-imperialist forces all over the world, including you all out here who have joined up with the anti-imperialist resistance. However, you've got to push forward. Join the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist Leninist. Be guided by the science of Marxism Leninism. I know some of you out here are laughing and mocking me, but believe me, people all over the world are hearing our message. But it's not only that, we cannot just simply be satisfied with us personally joining the anti-imperialist front. We must align the working class movement with the anti-imperialist movement 
that has been long divorced for many, many years in this country. And we can do it. We need to put aside our petty bourgeois identity politics, win over the working class, and build a serious resistance in this country. Comrades, red salutes. Quiero tener relaciones buenas y resolver nuestros problemas. Vayamos por la vía de la diplomacia, de la paz. Pido respeto para Venezuela y pido el apoyo del pueblo de los Estados Unidos para que no haya un nuevo Vindán y menos aquí en nuestra América. Pido paz, pido respeto y estoy seguro que vamos a ir por el camino de la senda histórica porque estamos en el camino correcto de la historia. Estamos en el lugar correcto de la historia. Muchas gracias.